everyone. Welcome back to the Dear Future Farm D Talk Show Season 2. Uh, episode 4, today I have two very honored guests uh, joining me today to share their story in pharmacy. First off, welcome Dr. Libby Shelton. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm currently an industry uh, fellow in addition to being a business owner for Learn With Libby LLC. So excited to talk to you all today and to share my insight. Yeah, um, for those who haven't heard of Dr. Libby yet, uh, Libby is a recent grad who creates content and support pharmacy and pre-pharmacy students. Uh, she's also currently an industry fellow that has been very active in that field. Uh, we are also currently have a pre-pharmacy student joining us today from Fresno State, as well as our pre-pharmacy representative here at the Student Arts Network. Shailene, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Shailene. Um, I'm currently a fourth year uh, biology major at Fresno State, and I'm actually currently currently applying to pharmacy school right now. So that's a little bit about me, and I'm excited to be here today as well. And by the time this is probably is getting published, you probably already got into one. So um, I hope our conversation today will foster a great story, experience, as well as advice for those who are watching or listening, as well as between ourselves. So without further ado, let's get this started. So let's start off with Shailene first. Um, what got you initially interested in pharmacy? Yeah, so since I've been currently applying to pharmacy school right now, this is it's something that I've been reflecting a lot on, especially when I was writing my personal statement and figure out, figuring out what I wanted to write about and explain how I wanted to pursue pharmacy and what got me into it. So I guess when... I guess my interest in medicine um, in general started when I was really young. Growing up, my grandma always cared for me whenever I was sick, and she used a lot of herbal medicine and gave it to me whenever I was sick and not feeling well. Like, for example, I would remember her, like, giving me a cup of, like, hot water steeped with, like, these herbs. And I would always wonder, like, how drinking this could help me feel better and recover. While on the other hand, like, my mom and dad would give me, like, over-the-counter medications from CVS or any pharmacy um, whenever I was sick. So, like, my mind would wonder, like, what the difference was between taking these medications um, and how these medications work to help people feel better and change someone's quality of life. So that's kind of how my interest in uh, medicine were, uh, started. But since I was so little, I didn't really know much about pharmacy yet until I got into middle school, high school. Um, and then I began to do some research on what pharmacists do and their role. And um, this career sounded very interesting to me due to like my curiosities. So um, my interest in pharmacy kind of escalated from there. And from there, I did some shadowing and just kind of started to expose myself to the field of pharmacy. So that's kind of how I got interested in pharmacy. Great. Um, now, uh, turning to Libby, um, maybe you can depict a little bit about your overall journey, you know, starting from your pre-pharmacy work um, to pharmacy school and what you have done so far. Yeah. Um, similar um, to Shaylin, um, I didn't quite get interested as a child, but um, it was more towards like middle school, high school. Um, really loved chemistry. And so um, I was kind of debating between chemical engineering and pharmacy, which are very different. Um, but I had a teacher who sort of pushed me towards pharmacy and said that it would be pretty good fit for me so I decided to sort of run with it um, and I love it so that's why I'm here now and I'm a pharmacist now which is so wild to say um, but pre-pharmacy I started at Purdue um, and I did two years of pre-pharmacy there I'm um, excited so like all my prereqs in that time in addition to you know getting that leadership experience so I could build up um, my application and things like that so some of the things I was able to do was I served as like representative for um within the Honors College, which was really fun. Um, I did research in a psychology lab, which people were very confused, like why is a pharmacy student in a psychology lab? But I have lots of interests, so I always pursue them, regardless of if it's like different um, from what I'm doing, I will always pursue my interests. So um, that's something that's really important to me. Um, and then I got into pharmacy school using all those random experiences that I gained um, throughout pharmacy school. I was so excited that I was learning so much clinical information now and I was like ready to go out into the world and apply it. Um, and so I got like an inpatient um, pharmacy internship 
And that's where I quickly learned that inpatient pharmacy is not for me. Um, and that sort of pushed me towards um, pursuing industry. Um, so I continued throughout pharmacy school to build up my leadership skills more, work more on my communication, since I know those are big skills um, that I would use in industry. Um, and now I finish in, so Purdue is a four-year program um, for the PharmD. And so finished that up and now I'm in industry living out my dreams. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, you know, I think following up like, you know, your experience of not having maybe having a job or an internship or an opportunity to learn something, then figure out that's not right for you or that you didn't feel like that that was it. I think that is a really important learning um skill or set um thing that you can help yourself to determine, okay, what kind of things that I actually like to do and focus on that. Funny enough, I personally do have that problem too. Um, so uh, it's great to hear that you have um, gone through that and, you know, um, being able to differentiate, you know, go through those experiences and differentiate what you like or what you prefer not to do um, as a future pharmacist. Um, okay, so we go back to Shailene. Um, we're just going to go through um, if I want to ask you if you have an experience that you can share with us within your pre-pharmacy group that helped you develop as a leader. Yes, yeah, so this one, I have, I've had so many experiences with this, uh, my pre-pharmacy club at Fresno State. Um, I don't know if there's an exact experience because as the president I've done I do a little bit of everything, right? I help everyone um, do their tasks. Every every one of my officers have their tasks and their roles to do, which is very important to the club. And I do a little bit of everything, I guess, just dele delegating tasks and monitor setting and monitoring goals for the club and um, planning and carrying out meetings. I feel like that really helps me, really helps me develop as a leader and made me realize that, you know, I am a leader um, for these pre-pharmacy students at Fresno State. Um, and I think... I guess this will really support my goal of, you know, gaining professional experience in leadership and pharmacy school in the future, you know, joining student organizations that will provide me opportunities to promote, you know, my leadership and teamwork skills. So um, that's a little bit of what I do with my pre-pharmacy club. I guess I have a question for you going off of that. Oh, yes. um, how would you describe your leadership style? Because we always say leadership and it's like um, a pretty vague term. So how would yeah. you describe your leadership style? Um, I guess for me, just being a role model, I guess, to, you know, the pre-pharmacy community at Fresno State, because one thing I've noticed is that there's definitely a little bit of lack of support for pre-pharmacy students. Um, at my university, there's a lot of support for pre-meds, and I see a lot of support for <laughs> pre-dentals. So um, I think that really motivated me to be that change in um, um be that change in the pre-pharmacy club and be more active, I guess, and um, educate others about what pharmacy is and by participating, you know, in, for example, tabling events and, um, yeah. I love that. Leading by example. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and that's very important, you know, uh, even from my own personal pre-pharmacy experience, it was, you know, the initiative to want to make a change um, and hopefully to provide those resources either in a professional sense or on a connection social sense, I think it's still very important to support growth of um, pre-pharmacy students out there. And I applaud you for your efforts for that, Shailene. Um, yeah, so going back to Libby, um, were there any like particular experience you had in pharmacy school that geared you towards industry? Because you said that you had a job um, in a, at a hospital and you found that inpatient wasn't for you. Um, were there anything that helped you to guide, like show that, say, hey, industry is something that I wanted to pursue in the future? Yeah, um, I'll start with my first experience with industry. Um, I joined the industry pharmacist organization, the chapter at Purdue. Um, and I went to like the first meeting as a pre-pharmacy student had no idea what industry was. Um, like, I really thought I was going to be a community pharmacist and I was going to, like, that was it. Like, that was for me. Um, and so I attended this meeting and they had industry fellows there and they talked about, like, what they got to do and how, you know, being a pharmacist in a clinical setting or a community setting, um, you typically are confined to helping the patients that enter your site. 
those are the patients you're confined to. But when you're in industry, you get to help patients globally, like all over the world. You get to make an impact on them. Like it's not direct and you don't get to talk to that patient and meet them. But indirectly, you get to help all these patients all over the world. And I was like, that's what I want to do. And then they talked about some of the fun things about industry where like there's travel and um, you don't have to work weekends and typically don't work holidays and things like that sound nice too. But I was more interested in the global impact in addition to the fact that I love projects. I love getting to like build things. Um, That's my favorite thing in the world. And so being in industry, I get to work on projects. It's project-based work. I get to build things all the time. Um, in addition to globally impacting patients. So I think that was the first encounter that really showed me like, hey, this is something I might be interested in. Um, Other things that sort of helped me find my way was just shadowing, networking with people, hearing about what they do. Um, My sort of logo or tagline for my business, Learn With Libby, is follow what excites you and the rest will fall into place. Because you know when you talk to someone and they start mentioning something and you get like really excited, the wheels start turning or super curious, um, keep following those things and you'll probably find like a career path that you're interested in if you keep doing that. So that's why I mentioned before, like I was in a psychology lab because it got me excited. Um, it might not have been like, it's obviously not where I work now, but like, I still love psychology. I still get to use it in my day-to-day job. Understanding people, understanding how they think, um, is something that's very important to what I do. So just keep following what excites you and you'll sort of figure it out. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, Actually, you know, from what I heard from your experience, um, we talk about the importance of networking, right? Uh, Were there any particular, like, mentors along the way that really helped you to solidify um, what you want to do? Or is there any particular person that really helped you to uh, develop as a current uh, industry fellow right now? Um, There were several. I don't think success is ever achieved alone. Um, So I've had lots of mentors throughout my pharmacy journey. Um, Even now in my current workplace, I feel like I have like seven um, that are always checking in on me and making sure I'm supported and growing. Um, So it's really awesome. But I think a few that definitely stand out. Um, One is Lauren Stiles. Um, So she was an industry fellow when I met her years ago. And I just reached out to her on LinkedIn and was like, hey, I'm a student and I want to know what you do. Um, And she worked in the regulatory um, space, which is not where I'm at now. I'm more on like the business commercial side. Um, But she immediately was like, okay, you're interested in industry. Like, let's talk about it. Let's start getting you the experience. Let me make sure you know what industry entails. And so she would like, we would meet and she would give me like homework. And so it'd just be like, oh, read this article from like the Harvard Review or something just to like help me understand business more. Um, And she would give me like, okay, you need to grow your skill set in these areas. Um, And that was something that was super helpful for me, um, like starting out and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, And then I guess I found more mentors within my college, outside of my college. Um, And then even when I was applying to fellowships, I had a mentor that sort of coached me through the whole process. Um, So definitely find a mentor. And it's okay if your mentor changes for different phases or different goals that you have. Like, that's normal. You don't have to stick with one person all the time. Um, You will have several and the more the merrier, right? (laughs) Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, but I also want to follow up on that in terms of what makes a successful mentorship or mentorship relation. Um, because there are a lot of mentorship programs out there, uh, for sure. And, you know, with your work uh, with Learn With Libby, uh, LLC, um, when did you recognize, you know, certain gaps or advice um, and learning for pharmacy and pre-pharmacy students and, you know, things that, you know, some students might miss out on because they didn't have the exposure. And how do you feel like something um, or what is important for a mentorship to fill those gaps in helping um, someone to grow overall? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So thank you for asking. Um, So I recognize sort of the gap early on as a pre-pharmacy student, because um, Shaylin, like you mentioned, um, there's a lot of things for pre-meds and other um, pre-health students, but I feel like there's a lack for pharmacy. Um, Another thing I recognized is specifically at Purdue, which now that I'm in this position where I get to talk to pharmacy students from all over the country um, and even internationally, um, some schools do it a bit differently, but at Purdue, 
our advisors were not pharmacists. So having someone advise you that has never been in your situation or has never gone through what you're going through was a very weird situation. And like, they didn't have the best understanding to be able to advise me. And so I always had to like, seek out other opinions and get a second opinion on practically everything they said, because they weren't, they're not pharmacists. And so I feel like that was when I sort of recognized the gap. Um, There were a few that were like, absolutely fantastic. Um, but then we started getting more that weren't pharmacists and I was like, this is weird, right? Like, does anyone else think this is weird? Um, so, um, that's sort of when I recognized that gap. And then as I was like looking for mentors, I think, um, something that I try to be and that I've seen, um, works well for me in my mentor, um, mentor mentee relationships is finding someone that will help you recognize your goals, um, and then give you the support that you need. So, um, one thing that I've learned over time is I can, I used to be like a very shy person. I wasn't super great at communicating, but I've grown in that area, um, throughout multiple experiences. But I think, um, starting out, you have to have someone that can sort of like pull that out of you. Right. Um, that can ask the right questions to understand like what, what you want to (laughs) do and how they can best support you in doing those things. Um, so having a mentor that asks the right questions, um, is super important. But I think the one thing about mentorship is a bit more reactive. So that means the student has to take the initiative first and like ask. Um, So you don't necessarily have to ask for a mentor, but like just how I met Lauren because I reached out to her on LinkedIn, like I asked to meet with her and then I found a mentor that way. Um, So I think mentorship is a requires students or the mentee to be a little bit more um, proactive in that situation. So I think that it goes both ways. The mentor has to be proactive in asking the questions, but the student has to start that conversation or start that relationship. Honestly, I can really relate to that. Lately, I've been on the mentee side of things, you know, applying to pharmacy school. And, you know, I've had a lot of mentors along the way as well. And like you said, I think it goes both ways. It's a two-way relationship, right? Um, It takes, you know, mentees to reach out and like, you know, reach out to the mentors for help. And it takes also the mentors to, you know, be there for the mentee and listen, you know, to our our worries and, you know, fill those knowledge gaps that, you know, we may have. Yeah, sounds great. Um, yeah, we can circle back to Shailene, um, you know, talking about on the subject of mentor or guidance. Um, I know that you did got the opportunity to like shadow pharmacists. Were there any like particular experience um, that helped you to learn more about what a pharmacist does in different settings or things that just you learn along the way? Yes, so um, I've done quite a bit of uh, shadowing um, in the past, and it my first experience was in um, um, at Valley Children's Hospital in Madeira, California. It's a pediatric acute care teaching hospital during my high school sophomore year. Um, it wasn't actually shadowing, but it was an introduction to what inpatient pharmacy operations was. Um, and it was through my dad's coworker's wife. So it's literally through networking how I actually got all through all these um, shadowing experiences. She's a pediatric pharmacist and the pharmacy manager at Valley Children's. And she basically gave me a tour like of the entire hospital. And um, I was basically visiting all the pharmacists on the different floors of the hospital, different units. And I was really surprised at how like pharmacists can work in different areas of the hospital, right? And it really broke that stigma of how pharmacists, you know, are just counting pills behind the counter all day at a retail chain, you know? Um, And I think that was really important for me to see. And then, you know, COVID hit, so the pandemic came and then um, volunteering and shadowing opportunities kind of were limited at that time. So after, you know, after the pandemic, I started to shadow more again. Um, and through networking again, through my pre-pharmacy club, I met a ICU critical care pharmacist in trauma surgery, um, at a level one trauma center here in Fresno. And, um, this time was very different from my first shadowing experience because I was able to round with the trauma surgery team, right? And I saw how the pharmacists interacted with, you know, the healthcare team. I saw, um, you know, the doctors, the PAs, the med students, literally the nurses, everyone working together. And we were like going through each patient case. And I saw her adjusting, you know, dosages and adjusting, um, 
you know, adjusting the medication plans for each patient. So it was, it was a really interesting experience. And, um, and through her, um, through networking with her, she thought it was also important for me to shadow in community pharmacies. So then she connected me with a community pharmacist um, that owned his own um, community pharmacy and in downtown Fresno. So I shadowed him and it was way different, right? So community pharmacy is way different from, you know, hospital pharmacy inpatient. Um, I, there was definitely a big difference that I saw that um, the community pharmacist, he had a more um, close relationship with his patients. You know, he, they were regulars, they're coming in. And I saw how he always, you know, asked them about, you know, like how they're doing, how's the, you know, the family doing. And I was like, wow, like he's definitely developed a really close relationship with his patients compared to, you know, hospital pharmacists. You know, they see patients, you know, new patients all the time, right, coming through. So I think observing uh, different pharmacists from various areas, you know, was really important in me solidifying my decision in like pursuing pharmacy. And, you know, I hope in pharmacy school, I learned more about, you know, uh, what's more out there. Yeah, I think it's so awesome that you've had all those experiences before you even gotten into pharmacy school. Like, I'm a little bit jealous um, that you got them so early on. Um, I got to do some cool things too, but that sounds awesome. Thank you. I'm really grateful. I'm very grateful for these experiences. Yeah, just a reassurance, you have more inpatient experience than myself. <laughs> so um, so that's good. Um, yeah, follow-up question is that, like, you know, after going through all these different experiences, um, what is something you look forward to, to continue in pursuing a farm, uh, to continue pursuing in pharmacy school or as a future pharmacist, right? Um, obviously, you don't need to say, like, what field you want right now. You just want to stay open. But, like, is there anything that particularly interests you? Yeah, this is a great question. Like, I'm honestly feeling a mix of emotions right now as I'm applying to pharmacy schools. You know, I'm like really excited, but also very nervous for this new chapter of my life. Um, I'm looking forward to a lot of new experiences and growth. Um, I guess I'm just looking forward to entering, like, you know, a professional program and, you know, to learn in great detail more about the different medicines and their interactions with each other and learning how, you know, pharmacists are part of the broader healthcare team, because, you know, they are the medication specialists. And, you know, I just hope to learn more about the different areas of pharmacy and, you know, figure out what I like, you know, eventually, you know, and like you said, keeping my mind open and seeing what's out there. Perfect. Um, should, uh, going back to Libby, um, do you have any future plans for post fellowship or any plans to expand services from Learn with Libby LLC? Uh, yeah, so I have had several conversations in the past week, like, what do I want to be when I grow up? Um, still don't know. <laughs> still figuring out, still exploring. I think that's the beauty of doing a fellowship is I get to see, like, industry is such a broad category. Um, and there's so many opportunities for pharmacists within industry. Um, so the fact that, like, I'm in a position where my whole job is to just learn and figure out what I want to do next um, is really awesome. So still figuring that out. But I know that um, I want to be part of academia in some form or fashion. Um, I love teaching, which I think um, is obvious to a lot of people when they get to my Instagram page and see how I work with students and things like that. So it's a passion of mine. Um, I also love what I get to do in industry, which my role in industry is I'm teaching in industry. Um, I teach basically um, all the new hires about oncology. Um, so I teach in industry. I want to teach in a school slash work with students. Um, and then I still want to continue to be my entrepreneur self, um, and, you know, work with Learn with Libby. So always open to expanding services. I have a million and one ideas in my head about what I want to do with Learn with Libby, but balancing it with life and work, um, is a lot. Um, but always looking for ways that and opportunities that I can better support students. So, um, always open to that, um, if, whether it's a DM, an email, um, what have you, always open to any suggestions. So to conclude our episode today, uh, any words of advice for pharmacy students and pre-pharmacy students who are watching this? Uh, we start off with Libby first. Um, continue to be curious, just like I said, um, you know, follow those things that excite you. Um, you never know where you'll end up, but if you keep doing that, you'll end up in the right place. Um, also, don't be too afraid to ask for help um, because people can't help you if they don't know what you need. 
Um, so you have to let them know what you need. Um, and then people are more than willing to support you normally. So um, keep an open mind and don't be afraid to ask for help. How about you, Shady? Yes. Yeah, so as I'm reflecting back on my own journey and thinking about, you know, what got me to where I am today, you know, I can't stress the importance of networking. You never know who you'll meet. Like pharmacy is such a small world and, you know, you'll go very far if you network and get to meet people and, you know, just be proactive and um, get involved. All right. Thank you, Libby and Shalene, for coming on to our show today. As always, hit the like if you enjoy our content and share it with this with your peers. Uh, click the subscribe and notification bell for our latest content and go give a follow on our social media as well as our guests' respective social media as well. Link is in the description. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this episode. We'll see you next time on the Dear Future Farm D Talk Show Season 2 with the last episode. Thank you.